One, two, three. No! <laughs> hey. Hey, Katie. What's up? How are you? Good. Happy to be here with you. Talking romance today. I'm Katie Gatogno. I'm Liera Tamani. And this is Love It or Leave It, the show where we talk about YA tropes. Yes, and today we are going to be talking about romance. Okay, so should we jump in? Yes, what's number um, one? The first trope we are supposed to talk about today is love triangles. Um, I know. So should we do um, a countdown of if, we're, if we love it or yeah. if we're going to leave it? Yes, all right. One, two, three. Amazing! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. My favorite thing about love triangles is how, like, I feel like they get such a bad reputation, but like, yeah. for me, love triangles aren't about like picking between two romantic partners. Like for me, they're always about like the protagonist picking between like two lives that she could possibly yeah. have two versions of herself. Does that make yeah. sense to you? Totally makes sense. I mean, even in your 99 days, like the love triangle between the older brother, and the, it's messy. It's, it's so messy. messy. And that's the it's thing so that I love about love triangles. They're so messy. And, you know, people are trying to figure things out and yeah. make it complicated. And a lot of times I can totally relate. Like I've definitely been in a situation where I've liked more than one person. Really? <laughs> My favorite thing that happened with 99 Days was a reviewer, like, in a in a big newspaper who, like, I don't know if he hadn't actually read the book or what, but he confused love triangles with threesomes. So okay. <laughs> he just thought a very different thing was happening in the book. Okay. Than okay. No, yeah, no, not with the brothers. No, not in Well, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> and they also, I mean, love triangles, too, are good in that, it doesn't always have to be like odd one out. It's like, right. you know, it wasn't a situation where one person was in power. They all kind of like equally were susceptible to being hurt. Um, yeah. So, and they still, ex it always explores, yeah, what the character wants and trying to figure out what he or she wants in life. And in yeah. general, it's it's good, it's good. Okay. I'm always here for it. Should we go for number two? Number two. It's stuck together okay so let's count down again okay one two, two three. three. Oh, not for you huh <laughs> okay tell me not why not for me. okay what i will say about it is anything can work right okay if the yeah. character is there you know if the writing is there obviously it can work but right. together i usually just like situations where um it feels kind of natural you know okay back together yes. It's not exactly natural. Sure, it's like an external force that's driving the love story and not like the the connection between the characters. Yes, yes. That makes sense. So that's my complaint about it, so. I hear yeah. you. Yeah. Um. All right, so next we've got enemies to lovers. Enemies to lovers, okay. Okay. One, One two, three. Two. Ow! <laughs> you do not sound convinced. Okay, the thing about me, you're gonna find out, is that like this is gonna be a very boring game to play with me because I love every. You're gonna love them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I would say if there was like a a medium or a middle, yeah. thing, okay, I would say. Uh, you know hold them both up now time if you're not right we can hold them yeah, both exactly up. <laughs> exactly but i would say that that would be me because generally in general in life like it's hard to not put myself in it and me mm -hmm. um if i hate somebody or if they're my enemy i honestly can't see me then going to be their lover and so That's it's like very fair and so it's hard for me in books to kind of make that leap. But obviously, it's a good chance for people to kind of like change their minds and see a different right. perspective and have a different understanding. Um, yeah. So, you know, but tell me what you love about it. So, I mean, I think first there's like different kinds of enemies to lovers, right? There's like that superficial, like we don't get along, like yeah. we like banter back and forth. We have, but like it's really kind of disguising a sexual tension, which I love. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I actually think that until recently, I probably would have been on your team, like 
for like if you're like real enemies and you have like real ideological differences like am i super interested in in that kind of love story yeah. um but you say it first my my new book has a little bit of that in it uh, actually a lot of it of that in it it's about like two characters who really are like they're polar opposites in sort of every conceivable way, like the way they see the world, the way they were raised, like the way there's like a political aspect where like Meg, the the girl character, um, she is like very idealistic and very politically active. And Colby is one of those guys who like doesn't think voting matters and like doesn't understand like what politics has to do with somebody like him. Um, and sort of over the course of these, like they wind up, Meg works for a voter registration call center and calls Colby's house. And that's how they wind up talking to each other. Um, and over the course of these sort of intimate, really like deep down conversations, they like at first they have not, you know, they get on each other's nerves like crazy and then like really start to kind of change each other um, and make each other better. And I do think that that yeah. kind of enemies to lover story now, now I'm like kind of into it, but I like, but I very much take the point. Yeah. No, it's very, it's, it can lead to a definite different understanding than you had before. And that's growth, you know, and you, yeah. and these days more people need to be talking and more people need to be yeah. kind of like, you know, obviously there are some things that just need to change and just, it still <laughs> requires a conversation, you Absolutely. know, um, and a meeting of some kind of mind. So yeah, yeah. enemy to, enemy to lover. Okay. So number four. Okay. Is be cute. Meet cute. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> well, how could you not? It's in the in cute in the title. How could you be like no to me? <laughs> there are so many situations in so many books that have and meet cute. It's just it fills you with all the feels, doesn't it? It's just like you can imagine yourself. Well, I can imagine myself in that yeah. situation, meeting somebody and like just having the tingles and having those feels. It's the best. Like, okay. Tell me your favorite meet cute in fiction. My favorite meet cute might be What If It's Us. Oh, um, that's such a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. And I like it. Well, obviously they're, they're in the post office bonding over, cause you always have those moments, right? Well, not always, but you see something kind of bizarre, but then nobody else sees it, but then both of them are seeing it and then they see each other. It's like, it's super cute. It's super cute. What's yours? That's really hard. Um, in all of fiction, it's probably um, Joe Fox and Kathleen Kelly from the movie, You've Got Mail. Okay, yeah. Um, which I am just obsessed with. Um, I have to, I'm gonna come back to my favorite one in, in a book. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll circle back. Circle back, circle back, okay. Okay. Um, okay, so next, number five, we have Friends Who Lovers. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so one, two, three. <laughs> I feel like I'm not getting my thing in there right. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> French lovers, what is not to like? What is not to like? It's the best, <laughs> isn't it? It's like not only like the slow burn of it because you like kiss while well, come on, come on, kiss. But then also it's kind of like, you know, two people get to be completely themselves. It's like instead of trying to impress or instead of like holding back because like something is going to embarrass you or you feel right. like you're going to judge, you know this person is your friend. Mm -hmm. And they really know you. They've they seen, you. yes. They're not yeah. judging you. Mm -hmm. And so you're just like, completely yourself and there's something like so wonderful about that and you just root for both people you're like yes of course fall in love of course y'all should be in love of course you should <laughs> i love a slow burn that's my very yeah. favorite <laughs> yeah um okay so next is second chances second chances okay one <laughs> two what? Even it's the one that I don't like. <laughs> Did I shock you? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like I don't know. Once you have a relationship and it's sailed, that ship is sailed. It's like wow. it's like I don't really. I mean, I've, like I've written a second chance romance, but I also, but I actually a lot of my books are second chance romance now that I'm thinking about it. But it's not my favorite. I don't like. Hmm. 
Um, no, I'm a total hypocrite too, because it, even in all the things we never knew, yeah. Carly gets a second chance. I mean, <laughs> the whole relationship is not a second chance relationship. Right. Like they're, you know, getting to know each other for the first time, but she gets a yeah. second chance in the relationship. And then Rex is going to need a second chance. I don't know if he's going to get it. But <laughs> wait, there, tell me more about the book while I've got you. I want to hear okay, more about the yeah. book. Okay. It is um, a dual POV romance between. My I know it's so good. I love writing it too. But between these two basketball players, Carly and Rex, they're from Houston. And when they first meet each other, sparks fly. And they think like, hey, you know, this, they have their own reasons for thinking it's meant to be um, that are deeper reasons. But then as they get into the relationship, you know, they both are keeping secrets and they both are experiencing family issues and all that gets up in the mix. Um, right. So you kind of have to see where it's going to go. But I love them. Rex is like a super tender, super vulnerable boy. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, I love him. <laughs> to death. And Carly is a little bit more guarded. Um, mm -hmm. But she, you know, has to work her way through um, being vulnerable too. Because if you're not vulnerable, it's not gonna happen. There you go. <laughs> you That's need very that. True. Yeah. All right. Ooh, yeah. What's next? We've got soulmates next. Soulmates. Okay. okay. So we one, two. It's not that I don't like soulmates. I mean, like, I'm not a monster. Like, I like soulmates. <laughs> I guess I just feel like I I don't know if I necessarily believe in soulmates in real life. I think I believe in different kinds of soulmates, right? Like, I believe in romantic soulmates, creative soulmates. But I feel like I don't, I guess I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that there's only one person in the in the universe that you can be happy with. And that if you don't find that person, then you're just like, you know, Crap out of yeah. I'm totally with you. This is, I don't think that either. And I think like, we need to change the definition of soulmates. Like, or yeah. it's like, you know, a soulmate is not like this happily every, ever after one person type of thing. I think right. like some people come into your life and you're meant to have, you know, a deep connection with them and they mm -hmm. are meant to like teach you things and shape you in some kind of way. And that is all I consider a soulmate to be. There you go. Okay. Not, it's not. So when I say soulmate, I don't mean like you meet a person, this right. is your one and only right. person in the world. Come on. No. Right. Of course there are other people. Okay. So I'm going to amend my answer. I will, I will be both. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Move along to the, to the soulmate side. Yes. I love it. Okay. Right. Number eight. It's our last one. Okay. Our last one. Okay. One. Love at first sight. Ah! Oh gosh. You know what? This gets so much hate. I have to just give it all the hearts because it gets so much hate. That's fair. Like insta love. Insta love. Insta love. Which, well, first of all, I feel like I've experienced love at first sight two times in my life. And like they're really wow. filled with the guy that it was love at first sight pretty much. And we've been together like, you know, almost seven years. My well, high school friend was also love at first sight. So I'm always in defense of it. Sure. But then too, once again, love at first sight doesn't mean happily ever after. Right. Of course. It's that like magical connection in the beginning, you know, yeah. you, you feel a spark straight from the start. It's not like something that you're like, oh, let me get to know him. It's like, no, you see him and it's like zing. That's this is it. Definite. And it doesn't always have to be completely based on looks either. It can right. be, you know, there's something about that person that you have their energy and yeah. energy or, you know, something about you that makes that person like extra, you know, special. So it gets such a bad rap and it's so good. Like, it is. you know what? I, your point taken. I, yes, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing you over. I'm bringing you you over. really are. You're very convincing. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now our job is to rank all of these tropes from the ones that we love the most to the ones that we love the least. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay so, which ones did we agree on? I think we, we both love love friends triangles. Lovers. Yes, friends to lovers, love triangles, and meet cute. Okay. So, what would you rank that at? Friends to lovers number number one. Yeah. Let's go. Friends to okay. lovers number one. Then meet love triangle, then meet cute, or then meet cute and then love triangle. Cute, then love triangle. Okay, I'm with you. So friends to lovers one, meet cute two, mm -hmm. love triangle three. Yep. Number four, we have maybe enemies to lovers. Maybe enemies to lovers. Yes. Yeah. I mean, um, I love, love at first sight somewhere well, up in there at the top. <laughs> yeah, love at first sight in there. Then 
then soulmates, and then stuck together? Is that everything? Did we get everything? Second chance, maybe at the bottom. We didn't do second chance. Oh, yeah. Second chance is at the bottom. Is that at the bottom? Is that number eight? Okay. Amazing. We nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) No second chances. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. I think we we nailed it. I feel very impressed with us. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Yes, that was so much fun. I'm Katie Katugno. And I am Liera Tamani. And we'll see you guys soon. Yes, bye.